friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am taking you inside my pantry and I am going to show you my top 10 staple foods that I always have on hand. I hope that this video is going to help you think about how you can start to stock your pantry with healthy, nutritious ingredients that are plant-based and help make living healthy easier. So having a stocked pantry is definitely one of my best tips for eating healthy and continuing to eat healthy. When you have a pantry that is stocked with nutritious whole food ingredients, you're much more likely to cook something at home and you feel prepared, you don't feel overwhelmed, and you can oftentimes just piece together something that is going to nourish your body that is going to be filled with healthy fats, carbs, protein, all the macros that you need, and is going to fuel you up and help you feel satisfied. So today I'm going to give you a quick tour of my pantry, and then I will pop back here and I will tell you my top 10 foods that I always keep on hand no matter what I'm doing. So welcome to my pantry. This is the cupboard in my kitchen that contains all of my pantry ingredients. It's four shelves high and the bottom shelf is all of my smoothie ingredients. So I have my plant-based protein, I have my superfood powders like maca, I have reishi powder, I also have ashwagandha root powder, and then I have my nut butter, so I have peanut butter, I have almond butter and I have cashew butter. <laughs> I also have coconut butter. And then back there is some coconut oil. I also have wheatgrass powder, some more protein powders, as well as any of my granolas. So that's my smoothie shelf. And then my next shelf is more of like my dinner staples. So I have my beans and all my canned goods like tomatoes. I have crackers, I have quinoa of course. I have red lentils and other dried lentils. I have other grains like forbidden rice, wild rice. And then the next shelf up is kind of baking related. So I have coconut sugar, applesauce, I keep my oats up there, I have some nutritional yeast, keep my raw almonds there. And then the top shelf I really just use as my overflow. I have more nutritional yeast, uh, more grains, quinoa, stuff like that. So that's kind of my overflow shelf. And then there's another final look at my pantry. So as you can see, my pantry is a little bit disorganized. I live in a small space in New York, so I really don't have a ton of space in my kitchen to stock all of these foods. So I have a corner cabinet that goes really deep. And as you can see from the tour, the foods that I eat most common are the ones that are in the front. And those are actually the ones that I'm going to be featuring. So let's go ahead and dive into my top 10 pantry staples. Of course, I need to start the video by talking about my favorite which is quinoa. Always have quinoa on hand. Of course, I blog about quinoa and I share hundreds of quinoa recipes on my website, but quinoa is an amazing staple food and it's something that I highly recommend everybody keep in their pantry, especially if you eat plant-based. Unlike other grains, quinoa is a complete protein, which means it contains all of the essential amino acids and you are getting a ton of protein into your diet when you incorporate into your meals. It's just a really great staple food to have on hand, not only because of the protein content, but also because it's super versatile and you can put it into pretty much every single meal from breakfast, lunch, dinner, even dessert. There are so many uses for quinoa. So that is definitely my number one staple food in my pantry. So I'm going to stick with some savory stuff for now. The second two, which are my number two and three, are beans. So I like to keep canned beans as well as dried lentils in my pantry at all times. I like to keep canned beans because honestly, beans take a really long time to cook and I just haven't gotten in the habit of cooking them at home. So if I'm craving things like white beans, black beans, chickpeas, anything like that, I'm going to buy those canned. When I'm buying canned beans, I always make sure that I'm buying organic, of course. I also make sure that there's no salt added as well as being in a BPA-free lining. That's hard to say, BPA-free. So you want a BPA-free lining so that you don't get any toxins in and no salt added. You just don't need the added sodium. You can add salt into your recipe if you need and just make sure that you rinse your beans before you add them into a recipe because even if they say that there's no added sodium, sometimes salt sneaks in just from the water or whatever. I just like to fully rinse my beans before I add them into a recipe because then I can control the flavor and the amount of salt that is getting added. As far as lentils go, lentils are the only bean that I always cook from dry. I think mostly it's because they don't take very long to cook, so I always have a huge variety of lentils in my cupboard. 
Right now, the ones that I'm showing you here are red lentils. These cook in about 15 minutes, sometimes even less. These are amazing. They are great in soups and stews. I just shared a recipe on the blog that shows you how to use them in a tomato sauce. So it's kind of like a meaty bolognese sauce, which is so good. Highly recommend that you go try to check that out if you're interested, I'll link it below. But the other varieties that I like to keep on hand are green lentils and beluga lentils. So green lentils are the French variety. They take about 40 minutes to cook. They have a really nice texture. They're great in salads and of course soups and stews, stuff like that. And then black lentils are, again, around 40 minutes to make, but they taste awesome. They are probably one of my favorites. I love the color that they add to dishes, but they're also kind of crunchy, and they're all lentils are packed with plant-based protein, so that's amazing. But there is really no end possibilities of what you can do with lentils, so I love always stocking lentils in my pantry. Next up on my list is nutritional yeast. If you guys aren't already familiar with nutritional yeast, I highly recommend that you pick some up because it is incredible. Nutritional yeast is basically a vegan cheese substitute. It has a really nice cheesy flavor, but it's also really healthy. It's really high in protein. A lot of times it's fortified with vitamin B12, which is one of those vitamins that's really hard to find in a plant-based diet. So I love adding nutritional yeast into my sauces, into soups. I add it into like creamy things like a queso dip or anything like that. I also love sprinkling it on top of pizza, on top of pastas. I love sprinkling it on salads. I also love adding it to popcorn. And since it's so healthy, it's just, I feel great eating it. And I love getting the vitamin B and I love that I'm able to add extra protein. It's relatively inexpensive. You can a lot of times find it in bulk or you can buy it in bulk online. And it's one of those things that I always, always, always make sure that I have in my pantry because I use it all the time. So next up on my list is rolled oats and I'm bundling rolled oats with quinoa flakes. So basically it's grain flakes that I like to keep in my pantry. I have oats here because the quinoa was kind of far back in the pantry and I didn't feel like pulling it out. But you guys know that there are a ton of uses for oats. Oats are amazing breakfast food. They also are delicious inside of baked goods. You can add them to smoothies. Oats are just really great because they're high in fiber. They help to bulk up your meals. They are complex carbohydrates, which mean they digest more slowly in your system, which helps to keep you fuller for longer. And they taste amazing. They're super versatile. You can use them in a ton of different ways. They're super cheap, which is awesome. And if you are gluten-free, just make sure that you're buying certified gluten-free oats because a lot of times there are cross-contamination issues. And they're just basically one of those foods that I recommend to everybody to include into your pantry because they are affordable, they are healthy, and they're a great way to get in some nutrients. Next up on my list is coconut oil. And I love coconut oil. I use it as a moisturizer. I use it to take off my makeup. I also use it in cooking all the time. It's a high heat oil so you can cook vegetables and you can put it on high heat and it's not gonna burn like olive oil and it tastes amazing, it tastes like coconut, so if you aren't a coconut fan, I recommend that you look into other oils. My probably second favorite oil is avocado oil. But coconut oil is just one of those base ingredients that I recommend everybody stock into their pantry. It's relatively affordable, you don't need a lot of it in your cooking, so you're not gonna go through it super quickly. Um, I recommend that you buy organic and cold pressed whenever possible. That is just gonna make sure that you're getting as many nutrients as possible out of the oil that you're getting. So coconut oil is definitely something to look into if you haven't already included it in your pantry. All right, number six on my list is plant-based protein. You guys know, if you watch my What I Eat in a Day videos, that I love my smoothies, and I have smoothie bowls almost every single day, and one of the ways that I incorporate protein into my diet is by eating a plant-based protein powder. So there are a ton of options on the market, like literally probably thousands of plant-based proteins on the market, and I often get asked which ones I recommend and the brands that I recommend I will link below and that's just through trial and error and taste myself but I will say if you're shopping for a plant-based protein make sure that you are getting one that is organic make sure that you are reading the ingredients on the back and make sure that they are things that you recognize and can pronounce I also like to buy raw proteins whenever possible and the one that I am loving the most right now is actually a grain-free version it's from Garden of Life and 
I just really like the flavor. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but the primary protein source is pea protein. I find that it's much easier on my system. Sometimes when I have a lot of grains in the morning, my stomach goes a little haywire. So I like having the grain-free option when I feel like I need something just a little bit easier to digest and lighter on the system. So like I mentioned, I will link the ones that I recommend and like in the description box below. So if you're looking for a good protein, check the description box. All right, we are moving through the list pretty quickly, but number seven on my list is nuts. And I always have raw nuts on hand. I love making my own nut butters, but I also just like them as a snack. I like incorporating them into smoothies. I like incorporating them to, into oatmeal or breakfast bowls, anything like that. So these are almonds, obviously, but the other nuts that I love are cashews, walnuts, pecans, and the same goes for seeds. So incorporating things like pumpkin seeds and sesame seeds, chia seeds, all those really amazing nuts and seeds. They have protein, they have healthy fats, and they're a really great way to incorporate all of those nutrients into your diet in a really easy way. I like having raw nuts, especially because they haven't been roasted and you don't have to worry about any of the nutrients being killed off. I will say sometimes these are a little bit harder to digest, so if you have a sensitive system, I would suggest that you go easy on the raw nuts and maybe just eat them every other day or eat just a few at a time, don't have like handful after handful, just because they might be a little bit tough on your digestive system. Going off the nut train, I can't help but mention probably my favorite food on the entire planet, peanut butter. You guys know that I am a huge fan of peanut butter. It is my favorite nut butter by far. I like almond butter, but give me some peanut butter and I am a happy girl. Definitely recommend that you guys stock up on nut butters in your pantry. They are a really great way to get in healthy fats and proteins into your diet. They're so easy to incorporate into your meals. I like to add peanut butter into things like savory sauces. Of course, I drizzle it all over my smoothie bowls. It's great on toast. It's good as a snack with chopped up fruit. And because they are packed with all of those nutrients, they're gonna really fill you up and they're gonna keep you satisfied and keep you full for a longer period of time than if you were just snacking on something like hummus. So if you aren't on the nut butter train, which I hope that you are, I hope that everybody in the entire world is on the nut butter train, but if you aren't, I definitely recommend you pick up some nut butter. Try to get nut butters that are organic and that have no added sugar, salt, or oils. It's okay to have flavored nut butters from time to time, but your base nut butter, you wanna make sure that the only ingredient on that package is the nut itself. You don't need all of the added oils, you don't need added sugar, and you don't need added flavorings or anything like that. So the last thing on my list is organic spices. I absolutely love using spices to increase the flavor in my dishes. I think that a lot of people feel like plant-based food is boring and unflavorful, and that is where spices can come into play. If you have a spice cabinet that is full of a variety of spices, then you can easily change the flavor, you can enhance the flavor, you can make dishes just taste so amazing without adding like a ton of salt or all of these weird sauces or anything like that. By using pure organic spices, you can absolutely elevate the flavor of your food and make yourself more happy, but also if you're serving plant-based food to other people, it will make them see that it can be equally as delicious. So I've thought about doing a separate video about the spices that I recommend as a staple. So I'm not gonna go through all of my favorite spices right now, but if that is something that you're interested in seeing, leave me a comment in the comment box below and let me know. I can add that as a later video to create for you guys. And that's pretty much it, you guys. Those are the top 10 foods that I recommend you stock in your plant-based pantry. I hope that this will help you get started with your healthy eating. If you have specific questions for me, always feel free to leave a comment below. I will try to respond to everybody, answer all of your questions. And of course, just like all of my other videos, everything that I mentioned in the video today is linked in the description box below. I will try to link specific ingredients that I use in my pantry so that you can buy those if you wanna use exactly what I'm using. Um, but other than that, if you guys have questions, like I said, leave them in the comment box below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, you can click that red subscribe button that is right below this video. There's also a little bell next to that button which will turn on your notifications and make sure that you never miss another video. So again, thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.